export sectors to tradable sectors with no tradable sectors. So this is part of the discussion because part of the history of the story of, of Ecuador and also the Uruguay is the how the, the, the governments use the, the monetary policy also to uh, introduce changes in the exchange rate. So that means transfers between sectors, between different activities, not only to support the financing of the public expenditures. So uh, I'm going just to, to present the first draft of our job. This part of our job is all the, co uh, we collect the data. Uh, we don't have a, a reflection in terms of the paper. So we just going to, to summarize some, some stylistic facts uh, for, the, for the period. So let me start saying two th or three things about the, the uh, long view of, of our economies. First, oh sorry, uh, this is the, the GDP per capita in compared to those uh, little eco economies from Europe, from Denmark and Finland. So Uruguay across the time has a, a long decline. So we start uh, with a percentage of the GDP from those co economies, and at the end of the 20th century, we are only just the third part of the the, the growth. Uh, sorry, the, the GDP of those uh, uh, those economies. So we have the history of Uruguay in the 20th century is a long decline uh, uh, history, similar to Argentina. It's very similar uh, to the success or uh, the development of Argentina. Second, we have an inflation economy during the, especially in the second half of the 20th century, and especially started in, during the 60s when we start uh, discussing our paper. Third, in most part of the closed economy, uh, we have a depreciated uh, exchange rate. So part of the policies are oriented to uh, support the tradable uh, export sectors. And, th and finally, we, are, we have uh, an important uh, fiscal deficit across the time, also during the uh, closed economy and also when we open uh, our economy, but especially when we have in a period uh, in a closed uh, uh, economy. So I want to say just that this data came only from the central government. That means that we don't include the central bank and we don't include also the, financial, the public financial sector and also we don't include the public companies that in Uruguay are very important. But the public companies in Uruguay contribute positive in all the time, around 2% of the GDP, the, co the public companies, energy, telephone, and... So they get a surplus, possibly. To a surplus, okay? So uh, uh, the, the problem to measure the deficit is also, uh, it came from a bad measure from the financial, public financial sector, but also by the public companies. We are trying to uh, improve our data, but we are going to, to have a, a, a specific job because the data is not available for those for all the period. It's just available just about uh, before the 1991. So the second vision that I, uh, the second picture that I want to show you is this economy is during the 70s effectively open to the economy to the to the international economy. The average from uh, the export plus import from GDP is around uh, less than 30 percent before 1973, and around 40 percent now. But with uh, those measures in the last years, that are very high. So our economy introduced a, a, a structural change in 1973, opening to the international economy, and that means a very important thing. I'm going to tell you in, in a few minutes. So our economy. As you know, it's a very small economy, only 3 million people. Um, we have a, a, some kind of, of dilemma between openness and closed economy. When we are an open economy, we used to grow more than we are a closed economy. But when we are an open economy, our volatility is too much strong because we receive uh, important shocks from the stagnant sector and we don't have the tools, all the tools to manage uh, those kind of, 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 of shocks. So this is an stability fact that is very new in, in, is very new in, in, in Uruguay. The other one that I want to um, just put on the table is in our economy. As you know, our economy is a strong democracy and a strong, um, we have had a strong political institutions. Uh, so the political cycle is, is very important in Uruguay, uh, especially because we have a lot of election during the 20th century in compared to the many countries in Latin America. So 
In, a, in average, from 1920 to, this is an estimation from 1920 to 2003, um, we have a, a typical uh, political cycle around 1% 1.5% in average for the whole period. That means when the government arrives to the last part of the, of the period, they start to spend more money. So it's very important to introduce or to, to characterize the, the behavior of the government in terms of fiscal. So this year is election year? This is election year, yes, this is election year. This is the year before, this is the year after. And it's important to understand that in Uruguay, in the first year after the election, you have all the year discussion, the, the, the new budget for the new period, because we have a five years budget in the country. So we lost one year discussion uh, the budget, like this year we are discussing. So this is a, a strong evidence that is uh, a lot of w papers uh, wrote, in, uh, wrote in, in, in that direction that shows that in Uruguay we have a, a political uh, cycle. And that means we have <laughs> bad institutions to stabilize our economy when we receive an external shock. Yes? Just to put things in perspective, is it very different from other countries that go to elections? No, this is a, a strong evidence. We have a lot of evidence in, in a lot of countries that, that this is the, the, the behavior of the politicals are, are like this. But the point here is that we have a lot of evidence in Uruguay that the, our fiscal policy are pro-cycle. And part of the pro-cycle behavior of our fiscal policy is related to that because in many times the, the movements of the fiscal policy are not related with the business cycle, it's are related with the political cycle. There is another evidence, I don't want to uh, go inside of this, because the fraction the, of the, 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 fraction, the, the number of political parties who are in competitors uh, inside, of the, uh, inside of the system are also variables that explain the behavior of the, of the, fin of the fiscal uh, in situation. Just, this is just a, a big picture that um, four or five points that I want to show you for the whole period, for the whole 20th century. But let me uh, concentrate now in, in our period. This is the history of Uruguay. This is the principal uh, milestone that we have during the period. We started in the period with a very important monetary reform. In 1960, we have the first uh, agreement with the IMF, uh, during the specialty, specifically during the monetary reform. So we have we divide the period because we have at the end of the of this period we have a a, a big shock from the ex international economy with the oil crisis and it's, it started with the, a lot of changes in our economy a tax reform an opening uh, of the economy also um, um, liberalization of the financial sector and that happens when the military government starts because. During the 60s, we lost the democracy for the first time in, in many decades. After that, we have a balance of payment crisis in 1982, like similar like Argentina and similar like Chile. And uh, we have the typical process of stabilization after, during, the, during the 90s. And uh, after that, we have a banking crisis like Argentina uh, in 2002. And we have a, a, an important grow, uh, growing uh, after 2003 until now. So this is the, the principal uh, point, that the principal period that uh, the, the description of the period is going to be separated. So I'm just going to show you some of the variables that uh, we can, the data that we can put in, in those graphs. First, we have, a, a, during the 70s, we have a, an important uh, um, inflation process. Uh, the growing in the country is around, in terms of per capita, it's around zero. In terms of uh, the total growing, it's around 1.5 1, 1 1 uh, by year. But it's the typical period when we have a lot of uh, important inflation, uh, especially because, as going, I'm going to see, uh, show you now, um, this is the only way that the country has to finance the, uh, the fiscal uh, deficit. So the monetary expansion uh, is the, the way to fin finance the, the important fiscal deficit happenings during the 60s. Because the, as you can see here, the, uh, the, the public debt is not an important tool during the 60s because the monetary is the, the principal so instrument. Yes? 
So the red is the public debt. The, no, the red, yes, the red is the public debt. The public debt. And it's not, it's not important. The no, it's not important. But why there was a default in the early 80s? Because was not we, we, don't have, we don't have a default in... in why did you have a Brady plan in 92? No, we have a, a Brady plan uh, just because after the 80s with the crisis, the, the, um, the fina financial and balance payment crisis during the 80s. But we don't, have def we don't go inside of, of a default because we don't have, we don't have debt with... So when, I, when, I mean, when I say Brady plan, what I mean is you, you are in, your bonds are in default. No, we don't, we don't have bonds. And then you issue Brady we bonds. Don't have, we, we do, yes, we, we have... We have um, credit from the um, international banks, and we went to the discussion with the Bra uh, with a Brady plan. But we don't have the most important bonds during that period. No, no, but it was bank debt. In the eighties, I mean, yes. in some countries like Argentina, there was yes. bank debt. It was defaulted in the early in eighty two, eighty three, and then in, when the Brady plan came, it was a swap of this bank yes. debt for the Brady bond. Yes, you don't. You didn't have a debt in default. Why were you? Swapping because I'm, I'm, going, going to swap to, to. I'm yes the 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 amount of money that the country has uh, to pay to the banks, international banks, because they those banks help to us to uh, start, um, to in front the banking crisis from 1982, 1981. So you issue that for the banking crisis. Exactly. But you are not defaulting. On we, we're not defaulting. We don't have. In, in, in formal terms, we don't have any uh, default during the 20th century after, no, after 1931. So Uruguay never have an episode of default. Okay. So the, the principal conclusion is during the 60s, when the fiscal deficit became very important, the principal way to finance uh, the, the, the public deficit is the, the Increasing of uh, printing money. So this is the reason why the senior acts, the senior acts here is very important. Here is a very important crisis, banking crisis. This is part of the the reason why the when the deficit, the fiscal deficit is not accounting with the mm, central government is an accounting in the uh, non -finan financial sector uh, public. So in the second part uh, uh, of the period that we. Moving in this, 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 those 20, 40 years. This is the, the first part of the military government. They start to open an economy, the stabilization, because we have a, 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 a very important shock coming from the oil shock. This means an increasing of the current account deficit. And also, we have in the first time an objective to uh, maintain a depreciation real exchange rate because we are going to confront the problem in terms of current account. So, looks please the amount of a contraction of the wages during the first part of the military government. Part of the restructure that the government, military government do is an important reduction in the um, salaries. That means the economy works before those kind of th those adjustments with al very high wages and with uh, we don't know what kind of level of productivity so the strategy of the military government is to depreciate the current the the, the, the the exchange rate and maintain the salaries in a very low level just to uh, recovery the, the the profitability from the private sector after that they start the typical process of uh, financial liberalization and also uh, an uh, stabilization process using the exchange rate, typical uh, as an anchor of the of the price system. And this is the part of the the the, the moment when the deficit from current account start to grow a lot because the prices in dollars in Uruguay became very expensive, so the people start to consume a lot of products from import. And this is the reason why, in this moment, the fiscal uh, deficit uh, reduced a lot, basically because this is the, the, um, the, um, the uh, anchor of the, the, the real anchor from the, from the process of adjustment. So after that, we have the, 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 the numbers of the fiscal situation, as you can see here. In the first part, we have an, uh, an, an increasing of the, the deficit. After that, we reduce the deficit. 
In this moment, in the all the much part of the of the period, we don't have the the, the public <coughs> debt as an important financial of the of the public deficit. But at the beginning of the uh, at the ending of the period, it start to grow the the public debt. So the period ends with a typical banking crisis with a loss of central uh, the, the, the central reserves of the bank. So we lost a lot of reserves in this period related with uh, the um, with the banking crisis. So the the last period started with a democratic recovery. So the 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 the, the decision of the government is a very heterodox period because they have to to try to resolve these objectives to stabilize the political situation to sustain the fiscal to obtain a fiscal sustainability in terms of the long term to equilibrate the balance of payment to start uh, or to obtain a financial stability and also to comply uh, the foreign obligations so that means a lot of objectives in compared to the tools that the the authorities has in power. As you can see here, this is a, pa a period of increasing of the growth. We receive a very important shocks from abroad, especially from Brazil and from Argentina. And, um, and this is very important, the recovery of salaries, uh, because this is part of the mandatory that the government received from the recu recuperation of the, the, the democratic process. In those period, as you can see, the the fiscal uh, deficit in is very high because this is related to the public uh, crisis from the um, accountants. Which is which? This is the deficit fiscal, fiscal deficit is this. This is around 8% of the GDP and most of this uh, public deficit is financed by uh, the public debt. This is the typical process similar that happens in, uh, in, in Europe the before of the crisis, there is not a public debt very important. The problem here are, like in, I suppose in Argentina, debt from the uh, companies and debt from the private sector. When the crisis starts, the typical process that happens is the banks has a lot of uh, creditors that they can pay for those credits. So the banks came to the, to the government saying, okay, especially Bank of America and especially Citibank, we are going to lend, give you money, new money, liquidity, but you are going to, ¿cómo se dice? En estar hacerse cargo es absorb it the 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 those um, uh, the um, those part of the credit that is impossible to pay. Uh, for the for the public uh, for the private sector. So this is a, a, a compra de carteras from the 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 the, the, the private sector gives the bad uh, so take over the banks. Yes, take over the banks. But we receiving new um, receiving new money. This is the reason why the public debt grow a lot in this period. Even here the public debt seems to go down very quickly, huh? so Yes. 100%. Yes, here Yes, this is a, a typical. Is this is a typical <laughs> process. <laughs> this is a dollarized. This is a dollarized uh, phenomenon. Dollar. And after that, when they grew, they grow, they grow, the economy start growing again. And when the exchange rate became in appreciated, you have here the. You have here, as you can see here, the real exchange rate appreciate again. So this is part of the reason why the debt. Because the debt is. Yes. So. And in 2000, sorry, in 2000, yes. did the government also take up, no, no, in the, in the previous one, sorry. In yes. 2000, did the government also take up uh, private yes. sector liabilities? No, no, crisis? no, this is not the, the same situation. During the, uh, during, the, during the 90s, the public, as you can see here, let me show you the, the fiscal deficit here. As you can see here, the fiscal deficit is very important especially because you are in the in middle of the uh, stabilization program 
uh, with uh, using the exchange rate like a, an anchor of the system. So the problem here is if you spend, you, if you increase your fiscal deficit when you are um, using the, uh, the the real exchange rate to convert the inflation uh, down, you have a problem in terms of uh, an increase in terms of real debt. You have to finance this because you don't have the you, you, you don't have the instrument to increase the, the base monetary to finance the, the, the expansion of the expenditure. The that you say that you have in the end next, in which is adjusted by the real exchange rate. This one? I don't know. No, uh, the annex is Oh, okay. Ah. Yes. I'm not just going to. This is no. Uh, where is this? I don't remember. That, one, that, one, that, that looked like this one. Okay, yes. So the right this one is with the fixed Yes, this. This is the specially, there is a two mo special movements during the 1982 and during the 2002. This is the same. So most of those movements of the public debts in terms of GDP is related with the exchange rate. Just let me, uh, we are here. So let me show you the picture of for during the 90s. So that happens during the 90s. This is the, the, the objective that the government start. And also the government has uh, uh, an important external shock, a very important external shock related with the plan de convertibilidad, the plan real, the creation of the Mercosur, the global trade experience, expansion, uh, etc. So during the period, the government start again a plan with uh, using the, uh, an exchange rate like an anchor of the, of, the, of the price system. But there are two or three uh, macro inconsistencies during this period. The first one is they implement this plan, but using, but doing a wage indexation process, uh, maintaining a, the, uh, an inflation adjustment from periods where the salaries are before are, are m more high so part of this the problem is the appreciation of the exchange rate is related because the wages uh, didn't converge at the same speed to the um, to the um, to the tradable goods because you are maintaining a, a important induction uh, process in, in in wages so this part of the one of the in, uh, the pressure to the real exchange rate appreciation during the period this is the reason why again the, f the fiscal deficit maintained it in, in a very high level financial with the um, external debt especially in, the, the, in in dollars and this is the reason why in terms of GDP when you introduce a depreciation of the currency in 2002 the, uh, the public debt increase uh, a lot. So, the macro risk that the government in front in this period was they maintain different structure of prices in compared to Argentina and Brazil. This is the real exchange rate with Argentina and the real exchange rate in compared to Brazil. As you can see here, the prices in compared to Brazil are very uh, Uruguay is very expensive in dollars in compared to Brazil and also Argentina and also in compared to Argentina during this period around 50% of our uh, goods uh, trades are really oriented to Argentina and Brazil and services around 90% so we maintain uh, in dollars and uh, expensive prices uh, in, with our principal um, partners in terms of dollars and also um, we, uh, during the 90s, also we, the private sector, increase the, the credit, the total credit for the bank system in compared to, in, in dollars, in compared to the total sector, increase a lot. That introduce a risk for the central bank because uh, uh, maybe a, a, a contingent liabilities uh, if the, the exchange rate change. And this is part of the explain the crisis during the crisis, the banking crisis in 2002. The last part that we summarize is the, the last 10 years. This is a, the best period of our country in, in the last 50 years with an important growing um, in, in 
in the GDP, and when a lot of correction of the distortion that uh, the government received uh, after the 2000 crisis, as you can see, the public debt became too much uh, small than before, and also the fiscal deficit converged with a surplus, a primary surplus. This is part of the objectives that the government uh, from the left started uh, in the last decade. And the important thing is Uruguay also received an important uh, positive uh, <coughs> external shocks that are export prices and the reduction of the interest rate from in, 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 in US dollar, etc. And, and especially some, ki some kind of policies in Argentina that uh, introduce a lot of international um, in, uh, an, an, ex an external investment uh, to, to the country. As you can see here, we maintain an inflation uh, around 9%, 8% in the last in the last period. But also we have here uh, uh, an important appreciation of our real exchange rate. We are with outside of the average of the last century. So we are expensive in dollars, and we are now uh, trying to introduce correction of, of this during this, this period. So just. Let me tell you four or five things before I conclude. So, the high inflation in the, the, we don't have any uh, hyperinflation process during uh, the period that we considered. We don't have any pre hyperinflation process in, in our history. But in, in during the 60s, this uh, persisted and important inflation are associated with the fiscal deficit. It is very important. After the uh, opening of the economy, the possibility to f finance the fiscal deficit using uh, the increase in the monetary basis is, is, is reduced. That means the public debt uh, have more important uh, after the dose period. The problem here is we use uh, the exchange, we use policies to reduce the inflation um, using the exchange rate and trying to transmit signals in terms of, of prices, and that introduced some spurious process of real uh, appreciation in the, uh, in the real exchange rate, and introduced also bubbles in asset prices and, dollar, and, and also a dollarization of the public debt, um, private and, and public debt. That introduced a lot of vulnerability in terms of the external shock uh, and the external sector because uh, a depreciation of our currency that converts in a, in a very important restriction for the financial sector, for the public sector and for the uh, private uh, financial uh, sector. I'm going not to introduce this discussion now because it's, it's, it's very long to discuss it, but the part of the problem of our countries, we have a, a, a number of tools to attack or to confront the, the principal objectives that are insufficient. In our country, Trying to, uh, we, the, the monetary base is only around 4% or 5% of GDP. This is a very small uh, monetary uh, base that is related with the unconfidence that the people has in the, in the local uh, currency. Also, the, the deposits of the money are in dollars, and many people um, didn't use the, or trying to use, don't use the, 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 the pesos. So that means. Uh, in, in, in all the period that we are, are considering, the combat to the inflation and, the com and, and trying to um, stabilize the, co the economy is use the, the real exchange rate and that introduce a lot of res uh, distortions in the macroeconomic uh, development. So this is a part of, of the problem. The lesson taken uh, from the last years is the real anchor for the stabilization of our economy is the uh, a fiscal, a strong fiscal policy, especially a fiscal policy with a um, primary surplus. Part of the problem of here is uh, our fiscal policy are related with that kind of uh, behavior of the tax collection. Around seven percent of our uh, tax collection is related to the consumption taxes. So that means the dependence of the tax collection in Uruguay from the behavior of the consumption is very, very important. And the problem here, like in many countries, in, in, um, is that the 
private consumption has a lot of volatility, inclu in also includes, uh, in, in some cases, a, a volatility more intensive than, than GDP. That means the, um, the tax collection is very pro-cyclical for the country. And that means the government don't have a, a, a very, import, a, a very uh, important instrument to stabilize the economy during the, the, the bad periods. This is one of the reasons why the government, the, the country reintroduced the, the income taxes uh, in the last decade, trying to diversify the risk to that kind of dependence of the of the consumption um, of the consumption uh, taxes. So uh, this is one of the, of, of the problem that, that we have a, an important procyclical taxes. Uh, to, to become an, a more stronger fiscal policy. Also, we have a problem with that kind of uh, management. This is the, the, the problem of the, the companies, the public companies. That is true that they, yes, I, that is true that they contribute with um, positive incomes during the period, but it also is true that they are in hands of politicians. And many times they are not strong oriented to the stability of the economy, are uh, oriented to the uh, agenda, the, the particular agenda from the, those who are in front of the company. This is part of the discussion that we have in the country uh, now. And uh, the discussion that in the country we have is how can we build a fiscal rule? And in the countries, this is not easy. We don't have a, 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 a star variable like a price of the copper in Chile or the price of the of the oil in, in Norway and we have to build a fiscal rule related to the um, to the GDP growing in, in tendency and this is not easy uh, for our country so the principle the, the next steps that we are going to to do in the for the project is to introduce those data with some kind of corrections inside of the model trying to uh, converge to the discussions that you have uh, during this session. So, this is our my comment. It's, some, it, it, it's an issue that I find important, uh, and I think it could be important for, for the, your project. And it has to do, do, do with, uh, say, uh, spillovers across countries, right? And the case of Uruguay is very clear. The, uh, if you give a look to the, uh, to the recent history of, uh, of Uruguay, then one thing that you observe that there are two large, I would say, huge crises in 82 and 2002. Then they are huge. Then uh, GDP went down by 15 percent around eight, 1982, 17 percent around 2002. Uh, these were related to, say, bank payment banking crisis, followed by large devaluation, debt restructuring. It, but what's interesting is if you look at Argentina. Then Argentina faces huge crisis around the same date. Uh, GDP went down in numbers that are of the same order, but anticipated Uruguay. Then I think took place in Argentina, then they crossed the, the uh, Plate River. Yeah? Then that reminds me that I, I, I dance tango. Right? And when you dance tango, you are all the time talking about tango. And then you realize that tango is Argentinian. No, that's what uh, people say. But times to time, there is a guy that claimed that tango from the uh, Plate River, that they call Rio Platense. No? Then the, I think the point here is the same nature. Is the Uruguayan crisis a, a Uruguayan crisis? Or is it just a reflex of an Argentinian crisis? Or is something that is common? It's a Rio Platense crisis, right? Then my dad would have said that uh, tango was from the Rio de la Plata, right? And, uh, uh, and then le let me be more, uh, say, striking on my argument. Then if you take, and this is the following, this is, this is uh, real GDP, then the, uh, the, the um, uh, continuous line, the black one is Uruguay, then the slashed is Argentina, and then the, uh, the, the gray is Brazil. They are going up some way or another, but if I give the Uruguayan uh, GDP to Juan Pablo, I think he would think that it's the Argentinian way. Argentina one. It's very, very similar. Apart from the, the, uh, the uh, say, the crisis in 91, where Uruguay did a little bit better, then the others are, wow, very, very. I would say, 
Cristina Fernandez did, or the Kirchner did better than the Frente Amplio, because the slope is a little bit larger, but they are very, very similar. Then, uh, the, the, the question here is what's going on, right? Why is it the case that these two countries are performing so closely in terms of GDP, right? Uh, then if, if you, then, uh, then uh, I'm trying to remember what they wrote. Uh, yeah, because then, then uh, the, the question here is, what is the nature of the crisis? Is something that is common? Is something that is from Uruguay, something from Argentina? And then you can think on, on, on different reasons why they think all together, right? It may be because Uruguay follow similar policies than Argentina, then that's your, uh, your uh, project. No? Try to see what the policies are and try to see how these policies deal with, with shocks. Then these two countries are following similar policies. Then, of course, you observe similar things. It may be that they face similar shocks. Right? Then what you observe is just a reflection of the same shocks. Right? Then they're performing equally. Or they are highly integrated. Given they are highly integrated, anything that takes place in Argentina just reflects in Uruguay. Maybe any of these three things. Yeah? Uh, what's interesting, and this is, I think, the relation with uh, my perception about tango, is that if you ask people in Uruguay about the first hypothesis, then does Uruguay follow similar policies than Argentina? People will say no. And we do much better. Right? And uh, what is worse is that some Argentinians will tell, yeah, it's true. Now, why? Wow, because they think that there is this guy that today many people in this world will dream to have a president as, 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 as Mujica. Of course, you know why people dream of not having him again, right? And, uh, or have a name mayor because of they think that perhaps the guy will be back. Yeah? Uh, and then when Argentina has a long history related to this guy, in some way has to do then, then there is some, some basis on saying perhaps things in Uruguay are. Uh, they perform better because policies, perhaps in Uruguay, are better managed. I don't know. It does not reflect on GDP. Yeah, it does not reflect on GDP. And this is, I would say, if we think in terms of the fiscal and monetary history of Latin America, uh, perhaps the product will be interesting in the sense that it will help us to answer questions of the nature. Then if, see if we face similar shocks, do, should, or do or should we follow similar policies? Is that important or not? I th think that, that some way economic policy comes on fashion. No? There, there, there was an uh, import substitution. That was a fashion. Everybody was doing import substitution. Now then a uh, crawling peg. Then uh, pre-announce your crawling peg. And then there was a sort of fashion. Because why people thought that, they, they, that at some point that this is the correct way of dealing with a particular problem, different countries were following similar policies. No? Then, uh, Perhaps there is some relation in, in terms of the nature. We are facing shocks of the same nature that at some point in history we believe that have to be faced with similar policies. Then that's the reason why we observe that countries as Uruguay look so similar to, to Argentina. No? Then there is the issue of economic integration. That if we, if we integrate more, of course, we, we have to converge in terms of policies. Right? Then it's a tendency of having common policies if, if you are more and more integrated. Then, the Mercosur came, now Mercosur is vanishing, then it's not clear that uh, perhaps at some point it, it played a role, I don't know. Uh, then the other issue is then it's not clear in particular in, in the 90s that we're following the same policies, but it's looked that we're performing, performing equally. Then why is it the case that different policies done? I think it's because, and I don't think in Argentina it takes place, but in Uruguay, we are all the time giving a look to the other side. If they do something, then we just to accommodate, right? Then some way, even if we declare that we are following a different policy, we are copying, no? They're all reacting. Then in some way, we are affected by the policy of the others. Then our policy is not independent. What I want to say that it, it would be perhaps interesting at some point in the development of the project, trying to understand the synergies. Now, the spillovers, then how things that were taking place in one place, some way related to things taking place in, in, in the other countries. You know? And that's all what I want to say.